you know, a lot of the focus uh, sometimes, especially in some Facebook groups. And unfortunately, I have some where the focus is all on the negative stuff. I, I'm not saying we should overlook the negative or minimize the negative, but there's always more positive, even with, in this case, the ASD has been there, and then there is negative. Although most of the positive stuff that lies within him, most of the strengths that he has, are not necessarily revealed in the context of the marriage. So he does have a lot of skills, but as far as skills that would be in the social and emotional realm of things, which are the skills that really count for you, now they're kind of sparse. Uh, but some of the things that he might have in the way of strengths that may or may not fall within the emotional reciprocity, give and take in conversation and so on department, uh, he's he's going to be very good at attending to details, sometimes with painstaking perfection, sometimes hyper-focusing on one detail to the exclusion of others, which that's not necessarily positive, but that could happen with the overly, overly logical brain. He's going to have most likely an excellent rote memory. He has to rely on rote memory because in many cases that's the only way he can remember effectively. He has to learn by example. He's not going to be able to generalize from one example to the next. So you may have tried to correct him on something and you got the impression that he got it. And then something else happened that was almost the identical thing, but he didn't get it. And it's like, wait a minute, how could you not get that? Because the other thing that we talked about was, was almost the same thing. So it's, it's good that uh, he has rote memory, but the downside to that is um, he, he's not going to be able to generalize. He'll have to learn everything piece by piece, and he won't be able to take what he learned from situation one and apply it to situation two. He's going to have higher fluid intelligence. In fact, there's a lot of research that, have, that suggests that people with ASD level one we're talking about have, on average, higher fluid intelligence than NTs. And if you want to know what that is, it's the ability to find meaning in confusion and to solve new problems. But we're not talking about in the social and emotional realm of things. We're talking about science, engineering, computer programming, and so on. Uh, another characteristic of high fluid intelligence is the ability to draw inferences and to understand the relationships of various concepts independent of acquired knowledge. Independent of acquired knowledge. So that is their, we would, I would want to call it their ability to be intuitive in the cognitive sense, not so much in the emotional sense. He's going to be very gifted in one area, maybe two. Sometimes he has several interests. He usually has one special interest, and he's pretty much an expert in that area, whatever it is. Uh, he is a very independent and unique thinker. He probably spends a lot of time alone in his head. I call it getting lost in his internal world. And he has developed his own unique thoughts as opposed to a herd mentality. And uh, he has a set of rules in his head, and you won't know what they are unless you violate them. And he is very much a solo player, independent, autonomous. That's not altogether good, especially in the context of a marriage. He has internal motivation, we will call it, as opposed to being motivated by outside things like praise, money, acceptance from others, and so on. He's going to be very logical, but on the not-so-great side, it's always going to be logic over emotion. So it's great to have high LQ, logical intelligence. But if you don't weave in some EQ, which you're good at, emotional intelligence, depending on what the situation needs, it's very lopsided. Um, he's going to be great at systematizing. Uh, in other words, thinking in systems and seeing patterns and themes and viewing. Uh, and again, this wouldn't have nothing to do in the social and emotional realm of things. But when it comes to uh, facts, figures, objects, graphs, sciencey things, engineering, computer programming. He can make sense out of stuff that would blow your mind. He can look at something, we'll just use calculus as the example, and, and he, he would blow through that almost at a genius level, perhaps. I'm kind of making up an exaggerated uh, example. And you would look at that same thing and go, I have no idea what the hell that even is. But he sure figured it out pretty fast. 
So he's going to be a very visual, a visual three-dimensional thinker. Those are some of the positives. And I wanted to start off with that just so you don't think that uh, he's got nothing going for him. He doesn't have much going for him with respect to the social and emotional intricacies that you would like to see. Because he is in his own little world a lot. He, he can, he definitely will have some obsessive thinking patterns. He's going to have difficulty understanding others' feelings, especially yours. He might come off as eccentric and narcissistic. It doesn't mean he's narcissistic, just some of the traits of the disorder look like narcissism. You've probably run into him disliking and perhaps even hating chit-chat, small talk, uh, especially of topics that fall outside of his special interest. It may appear that he lacks empathy at times. He does have empathy, but he does lack displayed empathy. And since you don't see it, you assume that it's not there. He's not going to have much interest in other people in general, like you do. He's going to come off as being very rigid and dogmatic because he has so much uncertainty going on in his world that he has to create as much certainty and predictability as possible. And that manifests in behavior that looks very rigid and controlling. He's going to have very limited interests. And most anything that you would want him to do, most anything, if not damn near everything, will fall outside of his special interest. He will not have much desire or motivation to do some of those things. His attention is going to be narrowly focused. He's going to be preoccupied with his own agenda. He may shut down whenever he is made to work on something at a level that he can't work on in the social and emotional sense. There's a, a lot of uh, stuff that goes on in the trait department that really makes your job very difficult. You're going to have to adjust your expectations if you're going to stay in this marriage and you want to avoid mental illness or physical illness, you will have to adjust your expectations. 